This is a Dell Optiplex 755 that I bought off of Facebook Marketplace for $10. And today we are going to see if we can give it life one more time with emulation. So the last time that we looked at this computer, we ended up downloading Windows 10 onto it and testing some games and just seeing how it did for everyday tasks. If you want to look at the last video that we made, you can click right in the corner of the video right here. But today I want to see how it does with emulation. This is something that I should have included in the original video but it completely did not cross my mind. That's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be downloading a couple emulators. I feel like the possibility that this computer has more life as an emulation machine is more high than it being a everyday use computer. I also wanna say, if you like what I make, consider supporting me on YouTube and becoming a member. Members get exclusive perks, such as an exclusive role in my Discord, and they get early access to videos each week. But I hope you guys enjoy the video. Before we got into the emulation part, I did want to make a small upgrade. While a lot of people did want me to upgrade the CPU in here, with this being a small form factor, I do not believe that a Q6600 would be the best option, especially if I'm just going to be doing some light emulation. But something that was very needed was an upgrade to the 4 gigabytes of RAM. I managed to get an 8 gigabyte kit for roughly around $10, which was a good deal. It should bring a lot of life into this computer and make it way more usable. Because before it was way worse and it was just so slow being able to load anything. So I'm really hoping that this helps us out a lot. But now that the RAM is inserted, let's make sure it powers on. And luckily it does. But it did say that there was a rear fan failure. So I went and checked it out and I didn't see any rear fan. The CPU fan and GPU fan were both working. So I don't know what it was trying to get at. I made sure to keep an eye on it while benchmarking and testing all my games. And luckily everything went okay. But if you would know what this cause would be, let me know down in the comments. But now that we have Windows open, we can see that the eight gigabytes is being detected. And with nothing going on, we are seeing at just above three and a half gigabytes, which means that this was a very good upgrade. It was much needed. But I did notice that the graphics card was not showing up. So let's figure that out. While looking through the drivers, I found this AMD install manager that I tried downloading, as well as I made sure to download all the Windows updates that it was telling me about. And after rebooting and find out that that install manager did not help, I installed AMD Catalyst, which did seem to work, but it still wasn't showing up. So we're just going to have to move on before I get upset at this. The first emulator that I wanted to download was Dolphin. I wanted to be able to play Wii and GameCube games. You know, those are games that I grew up on. I really wanted to push the limitations of this machine, so I know it would more than likely struggle. But I still wanted to see what it could do. Even though I followed a tutorial the entire way through and did everything perfectly, I was not able to open up Dolphin. It just would not boot for me. I don't know what the issue would be. I don't know what I did wrong. I tried reinstalling it multiple times. I just could not get it to work. I spent about two hours trying to get this to work and I just could not and we're just gonna have to move on unfortunately. The next emulator that I downloaded was Project 64. And this is to run Nintendo 64 games as you can tell. Luckily I didn't really have any issues downloading this or having any issues getting my games onto this. That I'm very thankful for, but it's probably just because I was watching a tutorial the entire way through once again. But now that we have an emulator downloaded, let's load up this hard drive with totally legitimate copies of games. The first game that we have is Super Mario 64 running at 1080p, running the best texture quality. We're getting an average of 29 FPS with a maximum of 30 because that's what it was capped at for some reason, and then a minimum of 12. I've never used this emulator before, in fact, I haven't used many emulators before besides for the Game Boy Color and Game Boy. So I really did not know what I was doing, but I tried my best to make it look good. It looks really nice. I was able to play this. It was smooth. The only weird part was the keyboard bindings, honestly. I will say, like every game on this list, I have never played this game. You gotta cut me some slack though, I was born in 2005, the Xbox 360 was already released. This does show that this game is very capable on this machine and that it runs it with no issues whatsoever. The next game that we have up is Mario Kart 64, running at the same settings as before. Every game will have the same settings, by the way. We're getting an average of 20 FPS with a maximum of 27 and a minimum of 9. I believe that minimum is because I did start the recording in the menu. I will say that this game did chug at some points, but I was able to finish the race and overall it was an okay experience. I didn't really have any issues with it besides that it just ran just a tiny bit slow. Now, I don't know whether that's because that was the limitations on the 
Nintendo 64, or if it was because this computer cannot handle the emulator. I would recommend 720p, but just because I don't know the answer to why it's running at 20 FPS, I just can't recommend it yet. The next game that we have up is Star Fox 64. We're getting an average of 29 FPS with a maximum of 30 and a minimum of only 16. This was a really smooth experience and I mean, I had a lot of fun playing this. It's really cool to see where the start of 3D was on the Nintendo 64 and just to see how much it really has grown. But I didn't notice any stuttering, any frame drops, nothing like that. I mean, there's a couple times when a lot of things was happening, there's a lot of explosions, but I mean, Overall, it was really smooth. And now we have The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. We got an average of 19 FPS with a maximum of 20 and a minimum of 13. Similarly to Mario Kart, you know, we are only getting that 20 FPS, which I really do not know why. I know some games technically could really be that unoptimized to where it runs at 20 FPS standard on the Nintendo 64, and so that's what my emulator is giving me. Overall, it was okay, just a little slow. You know, out of all the games, I probably wouldn't play this one just because I can't really deal with being at around 19, 15 FPS at some points with it dipping down to 13. So I, I really don't know about this one. Now, I was the most excited about this. We have Pokemon Stadium, and we have an average of 24 FPS with a maximum of 26 and a minimum of seven. While this game does chug a lot, I still think it's really fun and it's really playable. I mean, you're just battling against other Pokemon, so I still had a lot of fun. And I mean, like I said before, I've never played any of these games before. So just being able to go back and play these were just really nice and really fun. If you were to turn down the full screen settings down to 720p, I believe that you'll get closer to that 30 FPS mark. But if it doesn't bother you too much like it did for me, then you can run it at 1080p full screen, no problem. And I know what you all are probably wondering, can it run Doom? In fact, yeah, it runs Doom 64 like a charm. We're getting an average of 29 FPS with a maximum of 30 and a minimum of only 21. This is probably the smoothest experience today. And I had a lot of fun just going through the level. I've only ever played the original Doom before, so being able to play this and have a little bit different map is really nice. But I mean, if I would have had a 1440p monitor, I think it might even be able to do that. The next game that we have up is Spider-Man. We get an average of 29 FPS with a maximum of 30 and a minimum of 14. Some of the cutscenes were kind of heavy, you know, it did dip down a bit, but I believe just like before, it could be just because of the Nintendo 64. I was able to swing around, I was able to fight enemies, I was able to do everything pretty normally. And I mean, this ran perfectly fine. Just to see Spider-Man start out from this in the 3D world to go all the way to what it is now is just, absolutely insane. Technology has gone so far in such a little time. And the last game that we have today is Scooby-Doo Classic Creep Capers. Now this was mostly just one I just picked out for fun. I saw this on the list of uh, games that I had. We'll say that. I thought it'd just be really funny and I really just wanted to see what it'd be about. We were getting an average of 29 FPS with a maximum of 30 and a minimum of 16. There wasn't really any stutters. I mean, it seems like they did this game really well. Shaggy looks hilarious with his very skinny arms, but just like me for real. So as you guys saw in the video, Dolphin did not work, which I'm really ashamed about. I really did want to test some GameCube and Wii games. I tried looking into some other ones, but I couldn't really find anything. But I also cut out a moment where I tried downloading PCSX2, a PS2 emulator, and I didn't realize that you needed a PS2 BIOS to access it. And I tried another version and I just couldn't get anything to really work. And it really disappoints me that I was only able to play Nintendo 64. I mean, I still had fun. I never got to play the Nintendo 64 growing up, a little uh, before my time. <laughs> But it was fun to just play it and even if some of the games were stupid, <laughs> it was just fun. I will say that the PS2 probably would have pushed the limits of this CPU. With only having the Core 2 Duo, I know that's just gonna run into issues. The newer the console is, I know that I would need an upgrade, but I think the eight gigabytes was definitely needed and I'm very glad that we got that. But that's all I have for this week. If you guys like this video, hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys later.